In this video, I'm going to be breaking down my submission for the Ponisher Kinetic Rush 3D art competition. As you can probably tell, I've gone for a Toy Story themed 3D render. I really fancied doing a small macro scale character in a larger environment. I also watched the new Pixar Lightyear film which came out recently, which was where the inspiration for this render came from. Before we start, if you're interested, the assets from this video are available on my Patreon. To start off with, I sourced a 3D model of Buzz. I found this one on Sketchfab that was perfect. It was a little bit low poly and the textures needed some work, but it was a really good base level to start from. With the model in Blender, I then went about separating and joining the individual pieces. Because most of Buzz's body is a rigid spacesuit instead of organic flesh, it needs to be solid instead of bending and flexing. So instead of going down the normal route of parenting the mesh to the armature using automatic weights, instead I individually parented each of the body parts one at a time to the nearest bone. So there's no deformation, it's just rigidly connected to the armature. Then with the model parented to the armature, I did some work on the textures. I really love the style of the recent Pixar movies where they have all the surface imperfections on the toys. If you look closely at any of the surfaces in the films, they usually have some sort of subtle oily fingerprints or scratches on them. It adds a lovely level of detail and makes all the materials feel much more tangible. So to mimic this, I did the same sort of thing on Buzz. Once I'd laid down the block colours for the different sections of his body, I then went in and applied various scratch, fingerprint and grunge textures to the roughness and the normal maps. I kept them really subtle as I still wanted him to look clean. It just means on a few frames when he catches the light perfectly, you can see some of the fingerprint detail and things in the shaders. The model came with all the decals for his body, but because I'd done a complete overhaul on the textures, I needed to reapply them. So I took them into Affinity Photo and cut them all out, and then reapplied them using a separate UV map just for the decals onto his body. And with the model now looking camera ready, it was time to do some animation. I started off using the base template of the dive animation, but I tweaked it quite heavily after about a third of the way in. I offset the keyframes to be much earlier so the dive takes place right at the beginning of the shot, and then instead of diving over an object, I deleted all the keyframes after the dive and turned it into a glide using his wings down to the floor. And then he takes a few steps and runs it out before lining up in the same position as the template file on the last frame. One of the rules of the competition is you're not supposed to change the camera animation. So to create the two different levels of the scene where Buzz goes from the bed to the ground, I parented both Buzz and the camera to an empty so they would stay in the same position relative to each other. And then I keyframed the empty to move down to the floor once Buzz goes into the dive. Hopefully this is still within the rules. Technically Buzz is always in the same spot in the frame as the supplied template. So I think it should be okay. Let's hope I don't get disqualified for that. At this point in the process, I did a two hour live stream the weekend before this video went out. I didn't get a huge amount done in the live stream because I was talking to chat for most of it, but I did start to block out some of the basic lighting and I also put some furniture into the scene. I really like the look of having some practical lights in the shot, so I wasn't leaning too heavily on the artificial lighting in the scene. The practical lights add some nice contrast and keep the background relatively well lit, while still maintaining the separation between the foreground and the background. After the live stream, all that was really left to do was populate the scene with loads of objects. I wanted it to have a really chaotic, cluttered feel like a real child's room with stuff just strewn across the floor and left everywhere. Someone on the live stream suggested I add the Pixar ball, which is an Easter egg that apparently is in all the Pixar films, so I made sure to have that loitering in the background as a little nod to the inspiration behind this scene. I also created a few pieces of artwork to dot around the scene, the idea being that they're kids' drawings that have been pinned up around the room. I did this by creating some simple geo and then going into Affinity Photo and using the dry media brushes to create some artwork. I'd love to say I drew it to intentionally look like it was done by a small child, but the truth is this is probably about the extent of my drawing ability. I downloaded various PBR materials of wood and paint and applied this to the different surfaces in the scene. Tweaking the roughness of the materials allowed me to get that nice sheen that you get from where greasy fingerprints are on the walls, and it turns the fairly flat surface in the shot into something that's got some nice texture. At this point I started to create a slightly more sophisticated lighting setup. It was worth doing this so I could see how all the materials were going to react with the eventual lighting that I was going to create. In the world settings I used a sky texture and a sun lamp to create that direct light source of the sun coming through the window. I created a couple of spotlights that I placed in the corners of the room and added a track 2 constraint onto them and set it to buzz so they would always follow his movements throughout the shot. I then used light linking to constrain these just to the model of buzz so they wouldn't affect anything else in the scene. I wanted to maintain a lot of contrast and adding too many light sources creates a lot of bounce so light linking allowed me to get some really nice backlights on buzz without raising the overall level of the lighting in the scene. For all the lights in the shot, I used a black body node plugged into the colour of the emission. This allows you to punch in exact Kelvin numbers the same as you would set a white balance on your camera. I find this much easier to get a pleasing result from the colour of the lights in the scene, rather than just picking an arbitrary colour from the colour wheel. With the lighting most of the way there, I did a quick test render just to see how it would all come together in Nuke. 
in Newcomb applying a healthy amount of depth of field to give the scene a macro feel, and also just testing how the renders will combine together, adding some quick bloom and glow just to get a sense of how it will look when I refine the compositing later. Then back to the details. I took a photo from Google of a sock and cut it out and then laid this over the top of the drawers in the background. Like I said earlier, I really want the shot to feel messy and lived in. Another suggestion from the live stream was one of the Toy Story aliens, so again I found a model of one of these online, gave the shaders a bit of love by grunging them up slightly, and placed it in the background. Then, to hit home that it's a small child's room, I created a small plastic play table and chairs. It's a pretty simple model, and it's a nice eye-catching detail because I intend to put some nice saturated colourful plastic shaders on the table and chairs. Once the model was finished, I gave the shaders some similar love to the other parts of the shot. I added some surface imperfections with some scratches, and some grunge textures overlaid on the roughness input to break it up. I went quite heavy-handed on this because the objects are going to be slightly out of focus, so if the surface imperfections are too subtle, they'll get completely lost when they become out of focus. Next up, I added a second hand drawn picture onto the table, and just for good measure I surrounded it by a load of colourful pens. Of course no child's room is complete without Lego scattered all over the place, so I modelled a quick Lego brick, made a few variations with different colours, and then duplicated it and stacked these up several times, used a randomised transform to add some variety to their rotation, and then applied a rigid body simulation and just let them scatter all over the floor. This is much easier than hand placing them, and also tends to be more organic because they actually obey the laws of physics as they fall. At this point I added a second lamp into the shot as well, and I angled it towards Buzz to give the backlighting that I created earlier a bit of motivation. I set the bulb to be an emission material, but then I also put a blender spotlight in the shot, which is what's actually casting most of the light source that you see on the bed. The back walls were looking slightly bare, so I added a couple of posters to break them up. I also modelled one of those little glow-in-the-dark stars that you often see stuck onto walls and ceilings. I gave it a very subtle emission texture to give it that glow-in-the-dark green colour, and then duplicated this a load of times, rotated it around and stuck it all over the walls and the ceiling. Another technique that I used for some of the objects in this scene was 3D scanning. I've been sent a 3D scanner by a company called RevoPoint to use in my YouTube videos. This is a new scanner that's just come out called the POP3+. Plus. Some of the primary improvements of the POP3 Plus over its predecessor include an advanced optical zoom which you can see me utilising here. This allows for capturing much finer details that weren't previously possible with other scanners. It also comes with an upgraded glass calibration board. With its superior material stability, it provides more consistent and accurate calibrations. This scanner also comes with an updated frame point scanning mode. This mode greatly improves the scanner's tracking and capture abilities by better detecting markers. For my scene, I scanned an open book, as well as a jumper that I chucked on the floor. You can see me going through the scanning process here. And then from here, after scanning, I can output a highly detailed and textured 3D model that I can bring into Blender and throw into my shots really quickly. It saved me doing any complicated modelling or sculpting for things like the crumpled up jumper, which are quite organic shapes. Here you can see me placing the 3D scans into the scene. The level of detail of the scans is brilliant, so they make a great addition to the shot. And now it's time to move into Nuke to comp this bad boy. I rendered four separate passes. The first is Buzz on his own. Then there's the room beauty, which is the environment. I also rendered a utility pass for the room, which includes position pass data, a depth pass and cryptomats. And then finally, a volumetrics pass. As well as the four renders, I also exported proxy geometry for the room and the animated camera as an alembic into Nuke so I could use them while compositing. I started by overlaying the volumetrics pass on top of the room. The render on its own was quite washed out, so I colour corrected it to have a lot more contrast by gammering it down. Then I put a warm sky coloured constant in the windows. Outside the windows is going to be completely overexposed, so I didn't bother putting anything out there with any actual detail. Then obviously the render of Buzz goes on top. And then at the bottom of the script I applied the same lens setup that I had for my Spider-Man video. This includes some lens distortion, chromatic aberration, some slight softening at the edges of the frame, and also a soft glow applied to most of the highlights in the shot that gives them a bit of bloom. I also applied a glow specifically to the windows. I wanted this to be quite strong and have a really soft fall off, so I did it separately to the rest of the shot. Then I shuffled the depth pass from the room utility into the mainstream, and used it inside a bokeh node to add some 3D defocus onto the renders. I set the focal plane to be exactly under Buzz's feet, and then widened it slightly so the shot wasn't too shallow. Then I started using cryptomats to make some more minute tweaks to things in the background. I increased the brightness of the rug under his feet slightly and warmed this up a bit as well. The wooden drawers in the background felt a bit dark, so I gammered them up to show a bit more of the detail in the shader. I also made a mat for the walls and took some of the red out so they were more of a pure blue. The warm glow from the windows was throwing the colours off slightly. I included a transmission colour pass in the render of the room. This allowed me to isolate the bulbs in the lights, 
I started by softening the bulbs a bit by adding a localised glow, and then for the desk lamp on the left hand side I also created a spike ball lens flare. I did this using the glint node in Nuke, I set the number of rays to about 15, and eroded the source down to make the spike ball skinnier. Then I put this over the top of the bulb and mixed it back so it's really subtle. Next I wanted to add some additional detail into the volumetric pass. For some reason the shaft of light on the right was a lot dimmer than the one on the left, so I used the position pass to balance it out by creating a mat for the right hand side of the room and using that to multiply up the right hand side volumetrics. Then using the 3D assets I'd exported from Blender, I created a card in the middle of the room and I bought in a 2D asset of some atmospheric haze and put that on the card. I can then multiply this over the top of the volumetrics to make it feel like there's some dust swirling around in the shaft of light. Here I'm comparing the current look of the comp to the previous version that I'd done, just to make sure I was actually making it better and not worse. From here, the final step is to hop into Resolve and do a colour grade to make it pop. I started out by finessing the exposure until I was happy, then using the custom curves to create some nice contrast in the shot. Following that, I used Dehancer to apply a Kodak 2383 film emulation on top. This does some really nice split toning, just like shooting on film, where you get some blues in the shadows and some warmer highlights. I added a very soft vignette onto the edges of the frame just to darken them slightly. And then I mucked around with the new colour slice tool in Resolve 19 just to add some density into some of the colours. And with a nice looking grade, the render is complete. I think it turned out really cool. In total, I probably spent about three days working on this. Part of that was on the live stream, and then I've done a lot of it off camera as well, which is what you've seen in this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing my process when approaching a CG shot like this. Again, the assets will be on Patreon if you'd like to download them and have a play. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.